This is the MERS, M-A-R-S, Radiant Stove System from the company Fire Maple. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this unit, keep watching. Before we get started, I want to thank Fire Maple for sending out the MERS cook system so that I could share it with you. So um, what we're going to do is I'm going to close in on the system so I can show you everything it came with. I'll talk about its specifications, of course. They will be listed in the video description for your reference. I'm going to talk about what makes this system special and maybe worth your consideration. I'll uh, assemble it. And of course, I'll cook some lunch in it. All right, so once again, this is the Mars Radiant Stove System. That's Mars, M-A-R-S. And there it is in its compacted state. Now, the only thing I haven't shown you so far is the mesh sack that it comes with. And inside the mesh sack, I only brought it out so that you could see it, is the manual, well laid out user manual with warranty information. Of course, we can put all that aside because of course, all the working components are inside of the stove itself. Or the, I guess it's a cook set. I keep calling it a stove system because that's what Fire Maple calls it, but I'm going to call it a cook system or a cook set either way. All right, let's get started. So it does have a folding handle, locks into place, no different than you expect. Now, the only thing I'm going to say about this is it's a bit of a departure from some of the other offerings from Fire Maple that had a uh, a more solid looking type of folding handle. It had a piece of plastic or whatever the material was solid here with a push button release for the lock. I don't know that this is any better or the other was any better. Um, this works just fine. I just kind of assumed that they would go with the same folding handle as they did on the other ones. I don't know that there's a weight difference. I just mentioned that because someone's going to pick that up, of course. Now, there is a, a lid made of Triton with a silicone grab knob on the top, and it does have, it's wet because I've been using it already today. It does have drain holes, steam holes there as well as you would expect. Now, there are all the components inside. I'm going to explain what that is in a moment, but let's just now, I'm going to show you the rest of it. I just want to show you the inside of the pot. So it is hard anodized aluminum. It does have a neoprene sleeve around the outside and it does have a heat exchanger on the bottom where it will sit on top of the burner itself. So very much similar to the other offerings from Fire Maple and you know, pretty much any of the other big name companies as well. One last thing I'll show you before moving on is that there are gradient markings down the inside. It's gonna be hard to see on the camera. And it says uh, 32 ounces, one liter, and it maxes out, I believe, at 1.2 liters. There is a max fill line just above the one liter line up here, but there's still space above that. So that's the functional max. So you can get more in it it's just not a good idea to do that because, of course, it's going to boil over. Let me put the pot down, bring the rest of it up. A uh, small, nice piece to have is this little bowl that came with it. It is also made of Triton. It's a nice bowl. It's a reasonable size bowl. It's not a huge bowl. I'm going to say it's probably 500 mils, maybe maybe between five and 600 mils. That's the thing, though. They don't give me any measurements for it. I think I wrote it down. If I did, I'll put it in the video description what the capacity of this is. I guess maybe one little thing they could have done here is just to put a few gradient markings on the outside. So help you measure your water. Uh, I know it's inside of the pot, but maybe just help you measure other ingredients inside of the bowl as well before you move on. All right, let's put that aside. Now to the main piece of the stove, what makes this unique and different from the other stoves, certainly in Fire Maple's lineup, is this burner. So this is a radiant stove system. So it does not have an exposed open flame, as you'll see when I get it started up. This whole top glows red, and that, that has a couple of key, real key features or key advantages to open flame type of burners. Number one, and this is probably where I should point out the intended purpose as far as the design goes. I mean, you can use it any way you want, but this radiant system was designed to be used in very cold environments at high altitude where the oxygen is less, so the air is rarefied. It is very wind resistant and it is not as dependent on a lot of oxygen as stoves are that uh, as they would be at lower altitudes. So it has that advantage of being better at higher altitudes. Now this is not unique or new to Fire Maple. This is their version. MSR has been doing that for some time, as I believe other companies have as well. In fact, MSR has two stove systems that 
I looked at them because I thought I wanted to see just how similar they were and what features. And what, what, what I'm finding is, is that the MERS radiant system seems to have picked some of the best features from the MSR wind burner duo and reactor systems. And I'll let you go and research those uh, if you want to do some comparisons. One thing I'll tell you right off of the top is they are much more expensive than the Fire Maple Mars system. So uh, if you like the idea of having one of those MSR systems because you have a need for that type of technology, but you just don't want to pay those prices, then this is what makes this worth looking at. But one of the things I'll say about it though, it ends up, because of this radiant system, it ends up being heavier than a simple open flame type of burner. All right, that's feature number one, key feature number one for this system. Key feature number two is that it is a remote system. In other words, you get a gas line and regulator, we'll talk about the regulator in a second, that is away from your stove. So I guess it lessens the risk of heat transferring down to the canister underneath, although I don't see that as a huge risk. But what it does do is it means it's a bit more stable because you're lower to the ground. And to aid in that stability, you have these fold-out legs uh, as well. All right, so there we go. And there's the system assembled. Now, let's get back to the regular. So this is another key component of how this system works. This is a regulated attachment for your butane canister. We've talked about that in other videos as well. That having a regulator, a pressure regulator like this in your on-off valve allows you to get much more control over the gas flow. That's number one. Number two, it will work better or more consistently with a more consistent output down into much colder temperatures. I mean, it won't take you way, way down because that's dependent on the fuel you're using as much as anything else. But it will allow you to go into much colder temperatures and it will produce a consistent flame as the temperatures drop and as the pressure in the canister drops. So a regulator is a great feature. It's not a must have. It's just a nice added feature, especially for people who like to go out in the wintertime and still use a butane stove because Historically, they don't work so well in cold temperatures. Well, if you have a, radi a regulated system like this and a MERS burner like this or a radiant system like this, then you're going to be able to go into much colder temperatures. So those two things together combine to make this system work the way it does. All right, so those are the key features. So the last thing to show, although there is one more thing, the pot itself does not lock on. It simply sets on. And I, I wondered about that as I think that's, I thought at first, that's a bit of a step backwards because some of the others you put them on and lock. Well, what's nice about this is there is it's stable, it's not gonna fall off, but you don't have to mess with it to get it off of the burners. Just lift on and set down. Okay, here is the last piece I wanna show you. This is an attachment that goes on top of the burner, stretches to fit it like this. So now I can use the Mars Radiant system with any other pot or pan. So if you wanted to take a fry pan on along or another pot, maybe a much larger pot, uh, then you can do so with this riser, grill, pot stand, whatever you want to call it, on top of the system here. I will say, though, this makes it more subject to cross breezes. Now, the radiant system is nice in that it's, it's less affected by the flame, but, you know, if you've got wind coming across your burner, you're going to lose some of your heat. You know what I found is really nice about this is using it with a fry pan. Because of that radiant system, the heat is distributed uh, better across the bottom of any pan that I'll use on top of this because there's not a small direct flame hitting a specific spot on the pan, creating a hot spot as well. So this is great for that reason. All right, enough talk. Let's assemble it. Let's cook some lunch. All right, I'm going to put my gas canister on. All right, there we go, that's easy. Now, uh, it occurs to me that I didn't give you any specifications for this system. So I'm gonna do that just before I light it up because uh, one of the things I wanna point out is that, uh, you know, as you'll see, just how much quieter this system is than a lot of other gas systems like this. So I'm just gonna list two specs or two specifications now I am also going to talk in a bit after I get my lunch started about um, 
my tests and performance in terms of just how quickly this boil water and that type of thing. So overall thing, whole system, as I showed you, when I inside of that stuff sack comes in at 1.8 pounds. So yes, it's got a bit of weight, but as you can see, that's, that's primarily, it's in this burner where the weight exists. So that's what's important there. The burner itself has a rating of 7,165 BTUs or 2,100 watts, either way you want to express it. So it's a good, powerful burner. Uh, it is a porous type material that the gas is being diffused through and that's where it gets the radiant nature for it. So I wanted to tell you those before I lit it up because of course there's going to be some sound that goes along with this and uh, all right let's just get this uh, going here get ready to light it get my just okay of course now a breeze comes up just as I go to set do that we'll wait for that breeze well let's see if we can light it anyway. There we go it lit. Um, now, this isn't wide open, and I, I actually don't feel the need to turn it wide open, but I'm going to lean in, lean in as far as I can with the heat. Can you hear how quiet that is? Or I guess you, it's what you don't hear more than anything else. Now, what you should be seeing is the system itself turning bright red as it heats up. So the heat does take a couple of seconds to reach its max capacity, and uh, now it's ready to go. I'm going to be, well, let me just put the pot on instead of wasting the, the gas. And I can just set the pot on and I'm good to go. So I have two cups of water in this. I'm not going to wait to give it a boil time uh, on this two cups of water because I, well, actually I want to do that now before the water starts to boil. And that is put in my eggs. So my lunch today is going to be a couple of hard boiled eggs. Start them off in the cold water, which is actually already starting to warm up. Wow. All right, so there's my lunch started. Uh, yeah, it's, it is exceptionally quiet considering a lot of these stoves can be so, so uh, noisy when you get them going. And this is one of the things I like about using it while I'm out here in the wood is how quiet it is. Uh, that may not be a thing that bothers you, but, eh, you know, I just like to be as quiet as reasonable. So while that is heating up, let me just see if I can give you some specs, or not specs, performance that I got out of this. So I'd, I've done some tests, obviously some time tests. Now these were honestly were done at home. They were not done out in the woods. But uh, so you have to take into consideration that if it's cold, um, you know, my house was, I don't know, 14, 15 degrees. That's already starting to come to a boil. But 14 to 15 degrees Celsius when I did the tests in my basement. Two cups of cold water, boil time, one minute, 51 seconds. Six grams of fuel used. That's not bad, it's very comparable. I did some uh, research into what the other big name ones have and I'll put their specs in the video description so that you can do the comparison if you want. So two cups of water, minute 51, six grams of fuel. The second test, I put in a full liter of cold water. That took three minutes, 52 seconds to come to a full rolling boil. And I say full rolling boil, not just bubbles on the bottom, but rolling boil was the only consistency I could create for it. 13 grams of, of fuel. And then the third test that I did, I didn't use this pot. What I used was two cups of water in a 16 centimeter kitchen pot. Uh, and I used the pot stand because I just wanted to see what kind of an impact that has. You know, that is boiling. Oh, boiling hard. So my eggs are now cooking. And I got, so again, 16 centimeter pot, two cups of water, three minutes, 50 seconds. Um, that seems a little slow, doesn't it? When you consider, ooh, got it. Oh, there's a good demonstration. I needed to turn the heat down on this. That's only two cups of water. I'll give you not, oh. One of my eggs broke. That's the reason why it boiled over. Too much heat. This is an opportunity to show you this. Now you can see the heat. I'm going to turn it down to what would be a simmer. And this is one of the downsides of using this. You can get some fairly fine control, but it doesn't have a great range. I really cannot go any lower than that without risk of and just take the lid right off without risk of the burner going out. So while it does have range and it does have control, it's not a great range of heat. So primarily this system is best at boiling water, not necessarily at simmering. 
Yeah, that came to a boil way too fast. Both of my eggs are cracked inside. That's the reason it boiled over. All right, not ruined, just, uh, you know, annoying, right? But I'll still be able to eat them. But uh, yeah, I apologize for the mess that it created. Okay, so those are the three tests I did. Two cups of cold water in this pot, one liter, and two cups in another pot. Now, the reason the other pot, of course, is boiled or it took longer is because it didn't have the integrated system that protected it from the wind and have that heat exchanger on the bottom as well. Okay, you know what? These eggs, I'm just going to give another minute or two. I've got to cool them off in some cold water and then I'm going to enjoy them and then uh, we'll wrap this video up with a few more comments. Okay, I'm just waiting for my eggs to cool off. They're a little bit too hot to handle. So, okay, that was a bit of an embarrassing moment when that pot boiled over. It certainly wasn't anticipated. I, I'm pretty sure the reason why it boiled over was because both of my eggs cracked in the water. Uh, that often usually doesn't happen. I expect part of the reason is, is because the water got so hot so fast the eggs didn't have a time to adjust to the hot water. It's the reason why you don't put them usually in directly in hot water. Uh, yeah, so a bit embarrassing, but it did provide me a couple of learning opportunities that I can share with you. And first off is how quickly I could take the pot off of the burner and away from the heat to, to stop the boil over without having to fiddle with it to unlock it from the base. So that was a real plus. Can you, can you imagine trying to reach down and grab the bottom of the base while you turn to unlock your pot while it's boiling over into your hand? Yeah, that's just a recipe for disaster. So that's, not, that's just an aspect of it I had not considered before and it worked out really well. The other thing is, where did I leave? Here it is, the lid. Um, I needed to get the eggs out of the pot of hot water, but I didn't want to lose all the uh, albumin that had cooked up inside of the water because it was still edible. And that's where the strain holes on the lid came in handy. I could just go to a spot, drain the water out and retain everything, eggs and the albumin that had come out of the cracked eggs without losing them. So I guess if that had never happened to me, I may never have thought to share that with you. Okay, so what do I really like about this pot? Oh, there is one other thing I did not mention, and that was the gas canister itself. So that's an eight ounce canister, eight ounce canister of isobutane butane that I brought with me. Uh, there is uh, no way that I can figure out to get all of the components inside of the pot with the gas canister. If I leave the bowl well, actually, no, the bowl can stay. If I use the bowl, but leave the pot stand off and leave that home or carry it separately, then I can get everything in. But with that pot stand, it, they, it, well, let's put it this way. It'll go down inside easily. In fact, that canister sits inside of the bowl perfectly. So if you're worried about scratching the inside of your pot, the, the burner itself or the, the canister of gas will both fit inside of the bowl. So that's a bit of a plus for the bowl. Maybe you just want to leave the bowl hole at home. It really does not take up any extra space. And well, right now my eggs are cooling in it in some cold water to get down to a temperature where I can handle them. So I guess there would be reason enough for that type of thing. Serving my food in had I made a pot of something I could serve it, serve it to two people that way. Yeah, so if you're going to leave the pot stand home, then yes, you can put the eight ounce canister inside. If you take the smaller four ounce canister, no problem at all. It'll fit inside with the other one as well because it just seems to, well, it just works just all, the, all together. Okay, so what do I really like about it? Uh, first off, I'd have to say that radiant system, I have not used it in minus 20, minus 30 degrees Celsius yet. I, I, I had it out last winter. It worked, but it wasn't that cold. It was like minus 10. And it tells you how long I've had this before I got around to doing the review on it. So, um, Will it work in really cold weather? Well, there's any number of factors there. My expectation is with the regulator, with the radiant system, yes, it will work better in cold weather than a lot of burners who have neither of those will. How well? Well, I guess uh, that remains to be seen down at minus 20, minus 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, I like how quickly it brings water to a boil. It makes it very fuel efficient. Less so if you're putting a pot on top of the pot span, but you saw uh, it came to a boil faster than I had anticipated it doing so. So yeah, I, uh, that's one of the features I like about it. And I think the other one I really like about it is how quiet it is. Considering the amount of power this delivers and how quickly it'll bring water to a boil, this is a very quiet system. 
And I guess the last thing is the fact that it is a, um, a system uh, that comes separate, like the regulator is separate from the stove, so it is attached by a hose. That gives you that lower center, center of gravity, less likely to tip over, especially when you uh, turn the, the feet out. And it's, you know, it's a very stable system, let's put it that way. It makes adjusting the gas a little easier. So maybe this is where we'll get to the things that uh, are less than ideal. I like the regulator, the, the gas regulated system. I really do, it, because of all the reasons I mentioned earlier. But what my findings are is that it does not have the range from very high to very low that uh, other burners have. It's, it's, now don't get me wrong, it's still very functional. You just have to recognize that turning the gas down, there comes a point that it'll go out on you if you're not careful. So you just have to get used to where is the low point on this because it's harder to see. With an open flame, you can see it you know, shrinking down to a tiny blue circle of little flames coming out of the jets. You can't see that with the radiant system. You have to go by the um, burner itself staying and remaining red. So I guess my guideline has been as long as there's a little bit of color, orange in, or red in the, in the Mars system, then I know I'm still active. If I get below that, then it's likely gonna go out. You'll actually hear it start to sputter, so maybe that's another guide for uh, how low you can actually go with it. I have not turned it up to full blast. What I have found is that there's no need to. At the high end, you can have it roaring hot and continue to open it up but it doesn't seem to produce any more heat or any more pressure. So I guess that's also a, the nature of these regulated systems. Uh, and besides, you get better fuel economy if you don't open it up to full blast. It, there, there, it just works better that way. It may take a couple seconds longer, but uh, you save more fuel. And I think that's important over the long run, maybe not just for a day hike, but you know, if you're going out for multiple days or in your really cold weather and you have to boil longer, maybe you're melting snow, you want to be as fuel conservative as you reasonably can be. Okay, I think I've put all my points out there for you. Um, I will, of course, put the links to where you can purchase this system or at least take another look at it to see if it's something that you're interested in. I will put all my information, my clue, my specifications, my testing that I mentioned will be in the video description and the comparisons I made with the MSR systems, the two of them. They'll all be in the uh, video description below. I'd invite you, if you have any comments or questions, put them in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.